Hey guys! So I am back with my voiceovers and my mini tutorials because I want you guys to learn. Okay, let's get started. So here we are doing jumbo knotless braids on very fine hair. As you can see, this technique is um, a technique that some people use where they flip the hair over instead of just adding it in. And some people are just can just handle the braiding hair better this way. Me, I cannot do this. I struggle with this. But as you can see, just watch closely how she's adding in the hair. Boom. Stick it out. Remember to braid it. Bring it back down. Boom. Now, understand that the amount of hair that you need to add depends on the client's hair texture. So, you don't have to just keep adding hair, adding hair, adding hair, adding hair, adding hair. You can braid down at one point and then add hair as the braid gets skinny. But because her hair is really fine, a lot of hair is not needed to tuck her hair or to fill the braid in because she doesn't have super thick, you know, hair. So it works out. Um, everybody's jumbo knotless braids will not look the same. If you have thicker hair, your braids will be a little chunkier. Um, so her braids are going to be pretty flat and skinny just because you don't want her braids to be too heavy because you don't want her hair to rip out the root. That's how people's hair break off. A lot of people don't understand that you cannot use so much braiding hair on your client's head because it's going to rip their hair out. So clients, make sure you're aware of how your braider is braiding your hair when you get your braids. And braiders, make sure you're aware of how your client's natural hair is as you're braiding their hair. So as you can see, like I said, her braids are a little bit skinnier than somebody else with thicker hair. That's just what makes sense for her hair texture, okay? Now, some parts on her edges might be slightly smaller than the braids in the back or the braids at the top. That's only because you don't want to add the same amount of braiding hair on the thinner parts of your client's hair because their hair will come out. Like that's science. That's one plus one is two. Their hair is going to come out. So you got to understand you can make some braids slightly smaller than the other. Now here, as I'm braiding down, because I want the braid to be thick all the way through and I don't want it skimpy, I'm adding shorter pieces to the ends of the braids as I'm braiding down. The reason why I'm doing this is because I want the bottom of the braid to be the same like thickness um, as the top of the braid. So I don't want the bottom of her braids to get all thin and skinny. I want them to still be nice, full, and plump. So I'm adding shorter pieces that match the length of the braid and that's how I add it in. Boom, shaka, laka. See, I don't do all that pulling it back, pulling it down, pulling it back, pulling it down. I just add it in, boom, and start braiding. So that's why I'm adding hair because I want her whole braid to be consistent. And I'm adding another piece because she's getting like really long braids. So I want to make sure, like I said, she don't have skimpy braids. Excuse my nails, okay? It's hard for me to get to the nail shop sometimes. Anyways, as you can see... The thickness of her braids matches her hair texture. So if you have thicker 4C hair, your braids will not be as skinny as hers are. They'll be a little bit chunkier. And yes, so now we're just finishing it up and you guys can enjoy the rest of the video. <laughs>